This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's Friday edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about sim racing and everything going on in our favorite hobby, sport, common interest, that being sim racing. How you doing out there in sim racing land? I hope you all have had a great week so far. It is Friday, so we are kicking off the weekend, and we are getting into holiday season time, so I think people are getting ready to do a lot of sim racing over the next couple of months. And that probably starts off here in the States with next weekend being Thanksgiving weekend. And I think that a lot of people have some much needed time off right now to spend with their uh, family and loved ones with a little less pressure than life has been throwing at us this year. So a uh, little bit of news before I even get to the news. I just want to let everybody know, and I'll mention this at the end of the show as well. I am taking next week off. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving holiday week. Uh, I'll probably work Monday, Tuesday, and my brother gets off on Wednesday, and I'll probably be taking Wednesday through the end of the weekend completely off. That means there's no pit stop uh, this next week. So next Friday, there will be no pit stop. I'm not going to be in town, or I'm not going to be here at work, and I'll be playing, eating turkey, or recovering from eating turkey. So, And that, again, will be kicking off kind of the, the holiday racing season, I do believe. Now, Saturday... Next Saturday, not tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a practice race, but next Saturday is the Patron Appreciation Trophy Race, and I will be here for that, of course. That'll be next Saturday. I'll talk about that a little later at the end of the show when I show the trophy as well. So let's go ahead and bring down our thumbnail and talk about what is going on in sim racing, starting off with the ever-popular chili bowl. Now, in this case, I'm not talking the really real-life chili bowl, and anybody who knows Dirt Ogle knows the chili bowl. The minute you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, the chili bowl. Uh, chili bowl is one of those things that have been emulated from real life right into our sims, and iRacing has been conducting their very own chili bowl each and every year, and it's one of those big, giant races that is uh, basically open, open to all. So do you have what it takes to earn the virtual golden driller? I am assuming that's the trophy for the chili, <laughs> chili bowl. The iRacing Chili Bowl National Special Event runs this December 14th through 19th with five nights of midget racing from the virtual Tulsa Expo Center on Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and a 60-driver super session for the week's top point scorers at the same time on Saturday night. So this is one of those massive events. You know, one of my favorite things in iRacing, I will say, why do I like endurance racing? It's not just the team camaraderie. It's not just the magnitude, uh, uh, the the length of the event. It's the magnitude of the event. These super races, these races where you get hundreds, thousands, in some cases even tens of thousands of drivers involved, uh, are are just the most fun competition, or some of the most fun competitions for me in all of racing, and this represents one of those as well. Um, just like the real Chili Bowl, Saturday Super Session will be a full slate of heat races and Alphabet Sue feature races with the top two finish from the B main, earning the final two spots in the 20-car A main field. From there, it'll be 55 green flag laps between the start of the race and the ultimate glory and your chance to call yourself an iRacing Chili Bowl national champion. So there you go. Very cool. Coming up next month, start practicing your midget at uh, Tulsa. Sage Karam. Sage Karam, IndyCar racer, joined Scott Speed as multi-race IRX All-Star Invitational winners at Lucas Oil Speedway. Uh, so congratulations to Sage Karam. You know, Sage Karam, it is, this guy is fast in anything he drives. He's one of those kind of drivers. Doesn't matter what car you put him in, he's going to be quick. Uh, you know they run the Pro Series with the Invitational Series, the All-Star race. And De Mitchell DeJong! Gets his win this year. DeJong becomes the sixth different IRX World Championship. Look at how tight it has been in the IRX World Championship this year. With Mitchell DeJong taking until this far into the season to finally get himself a win. And he indeed did. Uh, Hellman in second. Hearth in third. Looking at the points at this point, that didn't help. Well, it did help him jump up to third for Mitchell. John Robertson leading the way with 145. Johan Harth in second with 138. And Mitchell DeJong with 131 as we look at the best rallycross racers in all of sim racing, hands down. Look at this. Bobby Zielinski, Mr. Dual Sport, sitting in six. That's pretty impressive right there. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, Tim Ryan returns to the iRace, iRacing World of Outlaws Winter Circle at Knoxville. So it's sort of cool how we have all the dirt racing in sort of the off-season of, of the big uh, 
Oval and Road Series going on. Anyway, uh, we got this going on. So Tim Ryan won the race. Where were they? Where were they for this one? Um, this is at Knoxville Raceway. Tim Ryan wins. Hayden Cardwell in second. Kendall Tucker in third. Alex Bergeron in fourth. Alex is having a tough season. He's been so dominant up until this season. He is second in the points and only one point back. But it hasn't quite been the same dominating season as seasons prior for Alex Bergeron. But still, only one point away from the championship. Hayden Carwell has a one-point lead. Bergeron and Ryan are tied for second with 146 points. Moving over to Assetto Corsa. Assetto Corsa had a really big week. This was their week for the 2020 GT World Challenge Pack. You had two updated cars, you had 60 updated liveries, and you had the addition of Imola. Uh, I have not had a chance to get out on track with that just yet. Uh, definitely something on my bucket list. Probably be able to take care of that over the coming week with it being Thanksgiving. Um, let's see, didn't, isn't this, yeah, here, let's watch this. I'll take a swig of coffee while we watch this. Brand new season of the GT World Challenge Europe powered Are we going to lose our right here. monetization over this? I feel like we might. Ready. Uh, it'll be going to the PS4 and the Xbox One in January. So not too much wait longer a wait for the Mercedes AMG GT3 and the Ferrari 488 and Imola. Two two All right, I'm gonna mute it because I'm afraid we're gonna lose our monetization. Anyway, you now can drive the new Ferrari, the new Mercedes at any of the tracks, including the new Imola for Seto Corsa Competizione as they continue to expand there. And speaking of new tracks, uh, we have new from R Factor 2 as well. The mighty Circuit de Spa Francorchamps. Now available for R Factor 2. Uh, available through the Steam store. I didn't click here. Let's click here and see what happens. There you go. $10.63 for Circuit de Spa. And hey, De Bonjon Samantha is now following us. Thank you very much. I appreciate you joining the team. And here we have a little introduction video of Spa for R Factor 2. $10.63. Available now. Spa. Spa means a lot. This is one of those, this is a, a favorite, you know, I mentioned an Imola for Seto Corso, one of my favorite tracks. But if you were to pull the entire road racing world, Spa is one of the big boys, isn't it? Spa is one of the most important tracks in all of racing, in my opinion. One of the best 24-hour layouts in all of racing as well. Now we're going to mute that, so we, uh, we probably already went too far. Who knows? Now, today my plan was to join my good friend, Mitchie Hoyer. And we were going to... Um, we we're going to do a dual stream, me with him. And unfortunately, uh, well, the world has gotten in the way once again, and I had to cancel on Mitchie, which sucks because I didn't give him very much notice. We we're going to be running. I was going to be streaming from my end. Mitchie was going to be streaming from his end. So if you check out Mitchie Hoyer's Sim Racing on YouTube at 11 o'clock this morning, he is going to be hosting a public community event. So if you go to Mitchie Hoyer Sim Racing, you're looking for fun, you want to try out the new Spa Francorchamps in the LMP2 car on R Factor, you can do it with Mitchie Hoyer, which will be a blast. He's one of the best sim racers in all the world, one of my good friends and uh, an amazing sim racing uh, uh, character. So he will be running that at 11 o'clock. Mitchie Hoyer Sim Racing on YouTube. You can join his stream and you can get out there and, and get on track. I encourage you all to do that. So uh, we got that going on as well. Um, thank you, Mitchie. I'll, I'll mention that at the end of the show as well. Uh, R Factor on their Twitter page also posting laser scanned, laser scan version of Spa Francorchamps. Just to, to make that, that point. Don't want to miss that as we get more and more serious about the quality of our content in sim racing. Now, Automobilista, 
not to be outdone this week. What a week in sim racing, I tell ya. Automobilista 2, version 1.0.5.5, and Nürburgring Pack have been released. So we have another preview. This update adds a Nürburgring Nordschleife, brings more AI behavior adjustments and extensive physics revisions for GT, stock car, and prototype series. Oh, Nürburgring, Nordschleife, the green hell. Another, wow, another just ultimate iconic track. Look at this AI battle. Is that AI, I'm assuming, just because uh, they're mentioning the AI adjustments? Fixed reversed grid and championship grow. Uh, some other change log notes. Added Nordschleife layout as part of the Nurberg DLC pack. Steam store page for standalone DLC should be available soon. And a bunch of other changes and fixes to Automobilista. Two. Project Cars also with their Legends pack, including the Mazda RX-7. The RX-7 R2. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be super excited about that. Boom! Available now for those who are playing Project Cars 3. I'm not. Dirt 5, not much out of them. Uh, we are expecting a force feedback patch by the end of the month. I'm optimistic for that. I have been playing quite a bit of Dirt 5 in anticipation of my honest review. Uh... Which I, I'll admit, this review has taken me a little extra time to do because I've been back and forth on how to approach it. And I don't want to let any more out of the bag than that. I'll just let you know, this review has been all over the place in terms of my approach, my attitude, and even, I dare say, my opinion. I think my overall opinion of what it is has been pretty strong from minute one. But my opinion on how to treat that is where we get tricky. So that's all I'm going to say. I am working on it. That's all I'm going to work on through the weekend before I go on my vacation. So we'll get that out real quick for you guys. Um, anyway, uh, their friends at Xbox have given us this amazing custom Dirt 5 controller. Controller. That's a pretty cool controller. I must say, that's a pretty cool looking controller. Uh, Want to get your hands on it? Retweet this post. And someone you want to play Dirt 5 with, and the contest ends November 23rd. So you have three days to do this still. That's Monday. Um, I'll tell you what, do me a huge favor. Enter this, because I'd love to have one of you win it. That would be awesome. Uh, tell them when you uh, repost this and at someone you want to play Dirt 5 with. I would encourage you, please, at me. Uh, you at that at Sean Cole or at the Sim Pit and let them know you want to play with me. Uh, which many of you will or have been at least Dirt Rally. Let's see here. Formula One. What did I have here? Oh, so Formula One, you know, they didn't give us the results. They talked about the latest round, round nine of the F1 Esport Championship. So when I go through their thing, they're on the Monza, lights out, Ferrari's talking about it, Renault's talking about it. And he, the lights are out. Here goes the green. Looks like Tonisa in the front. Alright, so that was the start of race one. What he's done in the past. Let's see what he can do right about <coughs> now. Pulling out of the slip. Brendan Lay. Another position. Brendan Lee moves up to Lee. fifth. David Tonitza claims the lead back, but it's not an easy one right now. And you can see Freddie Rasmussen is very, very close to Enzo Benito. He's going to have to get a move on because those two on the medium tyres. How far can Brendan Lee go? We're on board with the British driver closing in on Rasmussen ahead. And right now, he is a super confident driver. Nothing that Rasmussen is going to be able to do about that one. Up to fourth. I've got tingles. Brendan Lee's on fire. He's back, the two-time champ that everyone... I guess his tires are working. Winning. 
and now it's turned around and we want Brendan Lee to be ch <laughs> challenging at the front. This is a brilliant drive from Brendan so mindset that the two-time champion is in. He's had to be reminded Okay, of what so what else do we got out of this one? Uh, and he's into third. They're it's all over it. that's allowing him to attack. Say goodbye to the Ferrari because he's got the momentum. He's got the DRS and he's got a place on the podium. Will it end there for Brendan Lee? The next two cars up the road, Yano Otme and David Tenetza. That was really cool. Did you see that wing close when he touched the brake? two cars up the road, Yano Otme and David. Oh. He's got a place on the podium. Will it end there for Brendan Lee? The next two cars up the road, Yano Otme and David Tenetza. So the two drivers out. All right, uh, congratulations to David Tanitza. So he brought it home in race one, Monza. I think David Tanitza has done just about enough. This one in second. Him. It's been a difficult campaign. Lee but the in third. Pressure on his shoulders. Well, he has weathered the storm, and David Tanitza wins at Monza with a superb drive. He had two threats there: one from Brendan Lee, one from Jano Otmir. But he was big enough to see them off, and it's all the mascots you like. Tom Zilla is back on top. Oh, he's getting. <laughs> okay, um, and that's all they showed us. So, I, which I don't get, because they run multiple heats, multiple races. Anyway, that's what we get out of F1. Uh, NASCAR Heat, they have a new playoff pack, they're calling it. Today we released, uh, this was yesterday. Today we also released the playoff pack for NASCAR Heat 5. You can get all the details, including a full list of schemes by heading. Okay, so we did. And there we've got this uh, new DLC. Oh, sounds like my brother just left. Jimmy Johnson car pack. Um, let's see, Alex Bowman schemes, Byron scheme, Chase Elliott, a bunch of Jimmy Johnson schemes. Hey, God, a real lot, I played you. Oh, yeah, a bunch of schemes. There you go. Uh, Gran Turismo, complete the Mazda RX Vision GT3 concept user survey and receive 300,000 in-game credits. So, do you want to help Gran Turismo, Turismo with some information? Do you need 300,000 in-game uh, credits? Well, to gauge user feedback in the Mazda RX Vision GT3 concept, Gran Turismo, in collaboration with Mazda, is conducting a survey asking those with opinions on the vehicle to participate as a thank you for... And as a thank you for completing the questionnaire, you'll receive 300,000 credits. Um, so anyway, survey eligibility, if you've purchased the RX Vision, who participate in the, the time trial and the, or the livery contest. There you go. Um, WRC9, with a little post here talking about it now being on the next-gen consoles. So, since the launch of WRC9 on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, we received reports of compatibi compatibility issues with steering, wheels per steering wheel peripherals on next-gen versions of WRC9. As wheel support is essential for sim racing. Oh, thank you for that wor those words. As wheel support is essential for a sim racing game like WRC9, the KT Racing Team is committed to make the driving experience on the next-gen consoles as faithful as the uh, team is working hard to solve the issues, in other words. Also, look at this post. Something special is coming soon. Can you guess what it is? Toyota Gazoo Racing. Coming soon, WRC. That was just a couple days ago, um, and we have not seen anything of it, though. No, that was a Hyundai. Okay, and no news, though. So, coming soon. That's all we know. Rita! We already covered this. Rita with the hot fix. There was a hot fix, so we already talked about... Uh, 105.5 and the Nürburgring Pack DLC. Um, after that, they did do a little update. So 1.05.6 came out on the 16th, four days ago, and adds Nürburgring 24 hour endurance layout and corrects a few issues with the latest update. Check out the change log. We don't need to say change log, it's a little update to the update or a patch to the patch. SimuCube, you know, I, I meant, I'm mentioning this one because SimuCube Black Friday is getting closer. Keep a close eye on our different social media channels to learn what we are up to. Um, 
So new, no, no news on what they are going to have for sale on Black Friday. But I guess it's just sort of my quick announcement. We are one week away from Black Friday, which might already be going on for some sites and might start before Friday and might extend all the way to Christmas this year. Who knows what they're going to do. But uh, if you're ready to buy some equipment, I would be very careful over the next week. Because the next week you might find you bought something today and it's $100 cheaper tomorrow. Literally tomorrow um, in some cases. So be careful. Uh, but whatever it is, your favorite hardware, your favorite software, uh, Steam games, uh, every Black Friday is a big sale day. Sometimes it kind of sneaks up on us. But don't buy anything today. Check it or make sure whatever you're looking for. I saw a Logitech g29 i think it was through a euro seller on amazon f on a black friday deal for like 140 dollars. i mean it was ridiculous how cheap it was so before you go buying anything just make sure you're not uh doing it when it's going to be on sale for black friday and looks like SimiCube is doing something for sure american truck simulator with the release of the colorado dlc which happened just a few days back a whole new state is available and ready to be explored. Plus, there are special World of Trucks online events, the Cruising Colorado, in which you can earn unique rewards. Anyway, are you ready? So what is it? <laughs> well, well, we bet we can still pour some fuel into the engine of the hype train with this video teasing a new whip, work in progress, I'm assuming, um, coming to ATS soon. The question is, are you ready for it? So truck fans, what is it? Is it a new truck? What brand? Do you know? They have done wonders with ATS and ETS, I gotta tell you. Um, let's see, race department. Um, new thing. So we they recently this is an article at race department. The link is in the description if you want to read it for yourself. They recently sat down with www.gridfinder.com founder Tom Button to discuss his exceptionally popular new website and find out just why this is exactly what sim racers have been looking for. So here's Paul Jeffrey talking with Tim, Tom Bunton, and there's a little shot of GridFinder. Uh, not only is GridFinder a very, very useful tool for aspiring league races, it also has a nice community heart that you may wish to get involved with. Working to support the charity Calm campaign against living miserably, <laughs> a men's mental health charity. Uh, anyway, the idea is to pick the very best sim racing images to put a special calendar that will be sold to profits for the calm charity anyway uh yeah if you want to find out more about grid finder and what that could do for you and listen to its founder tom button uh there he is at race department this is posted auto car new sim racing series partners f1 stars with esport drivers vco pro sim racing series will see racers including max verstappen and roman grosjean drive alongside professional gamers a new sim racing series beginning this week will see professional esport drivers partner with blah, 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 we already said it blah 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 um including so max verstappen roman grosjean rubens barrichello timo glock uh tony canon charlie martin uh the, the the eight event series uses the established pc game iRacing and features a total of 92 competitors in 46 teams, with each professional driver paired with an eSport Pro. Teams will race in identical virtual Dallara Formula 3 cars with a mandatory pit stop for driver changes. Interesting, they're going to do a driver change on an open-wheel car. That's kind of unheard of. Anyway, uh, but anyway, this this could be an exciting thing, and I, and I think for me, this actually touches upon what I've always thought was maybe some of the best usage of real pro with eSport. You know, often they put those guys against us, where for the most part, maybe one out of 10 of them has a chance. 
The other nine are likely to embarrass themselves and maybe end up saying something that'll get them fired. <laughs> That's the reality of bringing the pro real life drivers in against esport pros. Now, putting them as teammates working together, uh, sort of like a pro am type thing. That's a really cool scenario and maybe a recipe for some really entertaining racing, hopefully. So we'll have to keep our eye on this. Drivers are competing for a $50,000 uh, total prize fund. And the winner of the fun cup will also earn a per personalized SIFA T performance simulator rig. Points will be awarded down to 30th. And yeah, so that's something else going on. Exciting stuff on iRacing. Uh, GT Omega, this is at B Sim Racing, and GT Omega talking about the new Prime cockpit. Now, don't quote me on this. I have not opened the box yet, but I believe I have one of those sitting right over there in my storage closet. Got here last week. I've got so much stuff in the studio that I have not been able to open the box and put them in place, but. I think I have one of these here ready for assembly, ready for review, and we're going to, again, have to work real hard to get things done and get caught up and, and on that. But GT Omega Racing with their profile tubing style rig and uh, various different seats available. The cockpit without the seat, which is what I have, I believe, is 669 euro. With an R6 seat, you have the R6, the R9, the XLRS seat, 799, 819, 839 for the fully loaded version, we'll call it. Uh, these pictures we're looking at are actually the 799 or 800 euro prime cockpit R6. And I think I'm going to be putting my uh, Sim Experience G seat on that as my extra. All right, looks like we, wow, today's show went pretty smooth, didn't it? We got a few things from Reddit, a few sim rigs and, and projects to look at, a little bit of sim pit racing to talk about, and then we're going to bring this show to a close. So what do we got? This one just made me laugh. Man, look at the look at the way the monitor is being held down, and look at the way the chair is being held to the, the, the wheel stand. Uh, this was posted by Mad Hedgehog. What happens when I spend the budget of an entire rig on the wheelbase, but I made it work? So instead of buying a rig, he bought himself a podium base. <laughs> Money well spent, I do say. And he just threw it on his wheel stand and then just said, F it, I'm going to use these tie straps, tie downs, to just hold everything in place. I'll tell you what, that monitor is probably not going to go anywhere. Um... I wonder if eventually the monitor will get hurt from that. I don't know. Anyway, pretty clever. Where there, like I say, where there's a will, there's a way. I just made that up, by the way. No, no one ever said that before. That's all me. Uh, Manu, 343726, posted this one. Five years of dreaming and hard work were finally worth it. So here he is with uh, a really nice looking. That's an R seat. Uh, that's pretty much my rig right there in black um he has the dual handbrake shifter i got my sequential i got my handbrake and i'm out of room so i'm making other mounts i just got a new mouse mount here that you guys can't see need to work on a little bit but anyway nice looking setup here that's a really good looking setup nice rig and nice sim room i can see you have lots of hobbies and interests very cool um this one by pat jones 310 Many of times, I wish my TV had a centered base until now. Well, <laughs> there you go. Look at this. This guy's got this TV on outside stands, which is kind of odd, right? Until you needed to put it up on two uh, stools so you could get your rig under it. Genius, brilliant, and very lucky. That kind of was made me laugh. Good job. Good job. Next up, <laughs> this one. Check this out. Uh, Daniel. Wait, Danila? Danila Ergachev. I'm not sure if I said that right. I might have screwed your name up. He's got his sim text. <laughs> Look at this. So, moved to a new home. Surprised how well his sim rig fits under the stairs. I'm assuming he's running that in VR. If you're running in VR, you can do anything, including the little uh, under the stair space. <laughs> Nicely done. Isn't it hot? That's going to be hot in there, I would think. I would think that would get a little uh, heated. Now, look at this. This is a slick looking rig. Wachong, Wachong05 posted this one. Some spray paint to his wooden rig. 
I just thought this was a cool looking sim rig. That's nice. I believe that's a DIY. I don't think that's a, I think that's like sort of a copy of the hyper rig. It's not a hyper rig. Look at that. Nicely done. Nice paint work too. Came out real clean. Real, that looks pro. Well done. Well done. And then this, just for some wheel motivation. This was posted by Juiced. Just thought he'd show off his DIY Ford Fiesta WRC steering wheel. Um, how do you like that button layout? That's a lot of buttons. Look at that. Five over here. Six over there. Another one there. A few dials. Impressive. I like it. Well done. Well done. I'm about to do my next wheel project. That's coming up soon, too. All right. And let's move on to rally. So I've been doing, I finally got involved with our Simpit Rally League. These guys have been going for a whole season. I finally got involved. And here we have the results from this week's rally with David Clymer. This guy, David Clymer, is on fire, I tell you. David Clymer is just kicking ass everywhere right now. And maybe tonight he's going to clinch the Simpit Oval Series champion. You're going to have to tune in for that. I'll talk about that in just one moment. But uh, David Clymer... In first, Heiko, uh, H.S. Whipperman in second. Twiggy in third. And Alesh Mom in fourth place. Good job to all those guys. I snuck into fifth place in this rally. Good job by me. Noir, Dave Blair, PS4, Deadman, Ola, Sarnquist, Sion, John George Hill, um, Boz, Booth, Amir, TFR, Turn 7 Racing. That is our final results for this week's rally. And uh, it seems Thursday's become my rally, rally day. So, David Clymer, last Friday night at Martinsville, won the race by a pretty significant margin. He he was unbeatable, really. And David Clymer won his fifth race of the season. Um, he is, I think he's pretty much locked it up. So when we look at the points, right now he has 287 points. He has a 13-point advantage over Billy Strange. I, I, think, I think Billy would have to win the race... And Climber would literally have to almost be in last for it to change the outcome or DNF. Tonight we'll be at Phoenix. Phoenix is a tough track. David Climber carries a 13-point margin over Billy Strange, a 14-point margin over Mark Michkowski for the Simpit Oval Arca League Championship. And you guys have, uh, am I gonna? You know what? Let's let's do this. It's it's trophy we it's trophy week, you guys. So for. The winner of the Oval Series is going to get this trophy right here. Yep, that is our champion trophy for the Simpit Oval Series. I will pull this badge off and put their name on. So right now, David Clymer's looking good for the win. It could be his trophy. And our Road Series, I'll give you where we were from last week. We have a Road Series championship on Sunday. And there is our Road Series Champion Trophy. So the winner of that one will be awarded on Sunday's race. So tonight we are at Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix for 90 laps to, to finalize things in the Oval Series. And with it being the end of the season, this also means if you've wanted to get involved in the Simpit Oval or Road Series, uh, we'll be doing some practice races through the end of the year. And right with the new year, we should be starting our new season. So stay tuned to the Pit Stop. Come into our Discord channel and get involved and you can take part. So on the LMP2 side of things of the road series, Gonzalo Peron won at Barcelona, race number seven of eight races in the season. Randall White in second, Randall McGrew in third, Anthony Murano Jr. in fourth, and Zoran Radosavic in fifth place. And that means heading into the final race, Randall White holds a three-point margin over Gonzalo Peron. And then Anthony Murano Jr. has 215 points, so he's pretty much out of the championship at this point and doing his best to hold on to a final podium position over Randall McGrew with 201 points. So right now, the trophy will go, it looks like, either to Randall White or Gonzalo Peron. It'll be with three points. It's almost one of those winner-take-all scenarios whoever out of those two finishes better should get enough points when i look at i don't remember our points per race let's see here we're looking at the results from last week and 10 point difference yeah for first and second five even between second and third three 
three points. So three points is what is needed. So anything up above third place. Anyway, that'll be Sunday, 10 a.m. is when we'll be doing that race. We're going to be at Nürburgring, Nürburgring Grand Prix course. Um, and then let's see. I already mentioned, but I'm going to mention it again because we're towards the end of the show. Mitchie Hoyer is going to be hosting a community event running the new Circuit de Spa Francorchamps for R Factor 2. Tune in to Mitchie Hoyer Sim Racing. Oh, I have a bug in my throat. Hold on. <coughs> Tune in to Mitchie Hoyer Sim Racing on YouTube and go out and join him on track at R Factor in the LMP2 car. At least watch the guys go out there and have some fun. So, um, sorry, I am not going to be there for that. I was looking forward to this, but just I have a few emergencies here at the house I have to take care of. Um, or I'm going to be in trouble. Anyway, that is coming up at 11 o'clock this morning. So immediately following this show or pretty soon after. And then the last thing I'm going to mention, look at this beautiful trophy. It doesn't have a name on it yet, does it? But... Uh, tomorrow morning, we are going to be running the Simpit Patron Appreciation Practice Race. Uh, we will be, I don't know if you can figure it out, we are going to be at Olton Park <laughs> in the VW Jettas. I get a race tomorrow in the practice race, but next Saturday is the trophy race. So next Saturday will be the race that I broadcast. I do the calls of the action, and the winner will win that Olton Park VW trophy for the Simpit Patreon Appreciation. We'll also do a drawing for a Simpit t-shirt and mouse pad. So uh, if you would like to join our patron program to help support the show, that is the real point. The real point of the patron program is to support the show. And it also does give you inner access to some of the things we do, including our patron appreciation races and uh, hanging out with our crowd. So you can check that out. We have a link in the description to our patron program as well, with tomorrow being the practice race and next Saturday being the trophy race. So a lot going on. We got the ARCA race tonight. We got Mitchie Hoyer streaming our factor two and the LMP at Spa coming up right after the show. Tonight, we've got the Oval Series race. Tomorrow morning, we have our Patron Appreciation Practice race in the Jettas at Olton Park. And then Sunday morning, we have our trophy race for the Simpit LMP2 Series uh, from Nürburgring. So what a weekend. What a way to kick off a uh, holiday season. And then the final thing I'm going to remind you is that next Friday, there will not be a pit stop. So I am taking next week off. I'm taking a vacation. I'm enjoying time through the holidays, Thanksgiving with my friends, family, loved ones. And I just want to wish you all the best holidays coming forward. So if I don't see you over the weekend, I'm not going to see you next week. Even if you're not here, Thanksgiving's an American holiday. Wherever you are, I, I just wish you a really good weekend. Be safe out there. You know, times are tough right now. A lot of things going on in the world that are a little crazy. You know, reach out to your friends. Say hi. Go to the people you love. Go to the people you know, the people you depend on, and, and remind them that they're important to you. Uh, for me, when I, Thanksgiving comes, it is one of those moments where I get real thankful. I get thankful and grateful the things that I have, the friends that I have, the health that I have. Be safe. Share love. And have a great weekend, everybody. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.